part two of volumetric data capture. This is following on from a very well received video I did earlier in the week about the FM25 player animations. Can I just say thank you to everyone that's watched the video. I've never expected the video to have this much success. Uh, having the, the level of support I've had over 35,000 views and counting on a video about a line of text in the Steam store is absolutely incredible. I didn't really think that uh, it would be something that people that uh, in, <laughs> engaged with, uh, if I'm honest with you. So look, this part two is trying to show you a bit more about what the actual technology is and how different places use it. So very quickly, we're going to go straight in. And this is basically what the stadium capture concept is under Intel TrueView for places like the Etihad, Anfield, Emirates, and in the Liga. So we're going to quickly play through this and I'm going to just quickly show you now as I talk through. So as you can see, they've got laser wall technology. And this is something that they've tried to introduce in that league. I'll show you this in a bit in a minute now. The graphics aren't the best. It could be FM24 graphics, let's be honest. But as you can see, the concept of it is 360 view camera technology because of the 38.5K cameras in place. That is what Intel TrueView. Okay, so quickly now we're going to actually touch upon how this TrueView works in Arriga. Okay, so the idea of this technology is with the 38 cameras, they can build up a replay around anywhere. So here you go, the pass is being set up there and it zooms into a different angle like I showed you the other day, nice and easy, and it's rotating around the pitch. It does feel a bit like the Orbit uh, replay you get in uh, EF, EAFC or FIFA if you want. So that's quite a quick introduction when there. But there's a laser wall. Look, it's the offside. It's to say, look, anything past that wall is offside. Look at Ronaldo now. He's definitely offside. If he's obviously appearing, he shouldn't be offside. But if you actually look at the actual footage when it comes up, the laser wall shows he is well offside because they can do the 360 spin. It's really clever, actually, isn't it? One of the key things I found when I was doing my research was actually is quite prevalent in the NBA. Now, volumetric data capture animations this is not actually a real game this is volumetric data capture they used a hundred so not 38 that we have in the football stadiums in football stadia a hundred cameras in there instead of the 38 in the football stadia look at how clear the animations and graphics are on this now bear in mind this is a game recorded through those data captures here you go look you can see harden driving to the box uh the ring the box drive into the ring you can see you look all the technology ahead but when we look now again at the player animations it's just one guy with a little twisting uh, of the camera this is canon it's not Intel. It's canon you can see you look the players are playing this is actual footage recorded there's no crowd but this is in 2022 this is not during covid but you can see you look if they can get that type of data that close up and then you can have, I don't know, similar type of tactics or scenarios going on in Football Manager. You can see how they may be able to get the player animations coming from these players. It's so clever. Originally, what they identified was they wanted to have FIFA 22 like the actual matches. So they identified that the physical space was too small. They couldn't actually have an organic match capture. The development tool was quite limited. So they turned to exits. You can see here, look, if we go, these are the um, motion captures we've got currently at the moment in time. You can see really small footage, but you can see them playing around in a small motion capture studio. So what they started to do then as an evolution of this. So they went to Xsense, which is a very similar motion capture technology that Football Manager use, but Football Manager use Vicon, which is, I believe, from the Creative Assembly studio. So as you can see here, as the players are moving, they're capturing the movement of those players. And this is in 22. So this is two years before Hypermotion came in. But you can see the basis of what they're trying to do. They're trying to capture it as an 11 versus 11 animation. So what they started to do then was actually start taking the shoot on actual football stadiums. So they did 10 to 15 minute takes. The referee was then responsible for cutting the game up. And there was also high intensity. And the idea was better graphical fidelity, which is one of the things we've got coming in Football Manager 25. As you can see, the players are wearing their motion capture suits. There's cameras all over the place trying to calibrate the pictures. And then, let me see if I can get that. 
So as we can see, you this is a cam camera calibration to set up all the individual points on the pitch for them to capture that. Eventually, it then becomes workflow animation. So what they then have is this is what the motion capture has captured of the player. And that's one of the players taking a free kick, for example. This is a player taking a pass. This is what was in FIFA 22. And they've then added on top of this a volumetric data capture, which you showed you earlier on, which is actual player animations, which is uh, players which obviously uh, they want to try and recreate, which is hard than anything else. But look, this is then um, the actual match footage they captured about a save. And you go, look, there's a shot, the keeper batting their way, and it's all there. This is what they were trying to recreate because they didn't have it before in FIFA 22 and they'd identified it. That's the pass, nice and easy. And as you can see, there's a pass going through there. This is where the image comes on the, on the uh, underneath. This is the XSense data to show you what the XSense data showed for a tackle, for example. And they were able to then use that by removing the one person and just creating another per creating that tackle, that uh, single player tackle then, which is quite useful to actually see. Again, this is FIFA 22, not FM 25. Got to be clarifying that. So how they track the ball, for example, was then highlighted there. So you can see there, they turn it to a hue and then they get rid of that. And then you see a tiny little dot that's actually the football for the tracking. And there you go, you see, you can see them recreating 11 versus 11 on the pitch for simulation purposes. And then this is machine learning, which is one of the things they were trying to highlight. So the GDA is actually the machine uh, learning system. And this is what the ball looked like without, without machine learning. So the machine learning was a better physics of the actual ball. So there you go, that is a touch on the ball. Let's have a look at this one again. Ah, it's the leg, see the leg bounced. So with machine learning, look nice and smooth. Yeah, without GDA, let's have a look one more time. That leg then goes out and then stops. It's not actual flow, motion flow. And that's what they were trying to get better fidelity with the input of the machine learning. Anyway, let's see what they were able to capture for FC24, FC25, and then what they're trying to do now in FM25. How did volumetric data actually get implemented into FC24? Well, it turns out with a bit of research, they were able to capture data for 11 versus 11 movement by capturing all 22 players at once in real competitive matches. The result was 11,000 true to football animations, nearly twice as much as the previous year, so that both squads moved like real worlds. And this is what's important. This is what's important to Football Manager 25. It's not necessarily the fact that players will be able to play, see players move one by one, and we're not really that bothered if they move exactly like Harland. It's more the thing of if a team looks like it's life like on the pitch, that's what you want. You want truer animations. I'm not, I've never suggested that it would be FC graphics because it's a different uh, engine to Unity. But what I'm trying to say is if the teams moved similar to real world, then that's gonna be a bonus and an improvement on a simulator, because at the end of the day, everyone likes what's under the hood. It's actually the, how it looks is what people are more concerned with at the moment in time. And then we move on to FC25 to see what they've done in the following year. You can see in the texture, the Mimic technology actually added an additional level of detail from FC24 to another 1,800 players and 200 of them were women. Compared to FC24, where we had 1,373, they said, with upper body movement, we've now expanded the library to 1,847 with full body movement. So when they brought this in in FC24, it didn't actually have full, full body biometric data actually implemented in the game. So the top half would run like Harlan, the bottom half would run like Joe Broggs. We really didn't know who it was, but that's what they've done. So why are we looking at this? All this is because of this little bit bigger. You can see that motion capture of females is not in a football stadium. It is actually, I believe it might be a creative assembly studios in uh, Horsham, I think it is. But the key thing here is you can see them kicking a the ball, passing a ball in the ground. Now, this photo is over four, three years old because this was already provided us in the FM21 dev update. And they had only just started doing that and they were on about hiring the goalkeeper. Now, in this article, it says that they have done more than 7,000 motion capture animations in the new game. And all of these had to be done separately for male and female. That meant hiring footballing twins, Molly and Rosie Kamita, and they've been playing for Spurs and West Ham to do the motion capture suits. They also 
had to do like a hundred, it says here, a hundred left foot, hundred right foot. And about getting a red card and being sent off. Goalkeeper Sophie Whitehouse, who currently plays at Charlton, was able to capture the goalkeeper movements. And they tried to simulate it as possible as best as they possibly can. The volumetric player animations should be a progression on it. But obviously this is early days. I just wanted to show you the technology, give you a little bit more background. And obviously we'll start kicking it off now with the women's database in the next couple of days. Until next time, why not have a look at the first video here and check that out? Or why not subscribe and like to the channel and see if there's something else that you may want to watch?